Okay, today we are in the second largest London borough, Croydon. Croydon is a borough in South London. As a borough, Croydon has widespread areas of significant social deprivation, with large parts among the country's 20% most deprived areas. Some smaller areas, mainly around Fulton Heath, have been measured as being in the 5% most deprived areas of the whole country. See, Croydon is a town known for its markets and great places to eat. From amazing artisan foods to artsy attractions, Croydon is the perfect place to explore. However, underneath all the arts and glamour, what lies in Croydon is a battle for the borough, a war that has caused a bloodbath in the streets. Today I'll be diving into many of the gangs which play their part as well as looking into the politics as to why things are the way they are. Okay, there's a very evident divide in the borough causing different sets to link up and beef each other. On one side we have STK, Whitehorse, Fifth, VP, SBV and on the other side we have Hashtag O, Double O, RT and Splash Set. And then we have gangs like G Lane and RG who beef gangs from both sides I mentioned. Now STK is a gang located on Shrublands estate. They are known for beefing most of Croydon and holding it down. They are part of the LPW Alliance which stands for Little Patch World. Whitehorse is a gang located in Whitehorse Road, also CR0 postcode. They are fairly under the radar with only a few members. Now Fifth is a gang based in South Norwood, SE25. They are mostly known for their most famous rapper T-Way who has made huge strides in the UK jewel scene. They are also part of the LPW Alliance. Now VP is a gang located in Valley Park, also in the CR0 postcode. Majority of you would have heard of their most famous rapper being SL, who went viral for his dual classic Gentleman. They also have rappers coming up such as B1 and Ying Yang. SPV is a gang located on Selhurst Estate, SC25. They have a few rappers such as Handy and LK. Now for the other side of the beef, we have Double O, which is a gang located on Fieldway Estate, CR0 postcode. Splash Set is a gang located on Bensham Lane. CR7 postcode. Now Hashtag O is a gang based around Leyden Street, West Croydon. They are mostly known for their older jewel songs by people such as Floss and Tugsy. As for G Lane, it's a gang located in Fulton Heath, CR7 postcode. They are known mostly for their music and descending from the original Croydon set called SMN. Their most famous rapper is Young Fumes, who is a pioneer in the UK wave scene. He also has a track with Lil Durk. Now 25 is a gang based in South Norwood, SC25. They are most known for Trap Times 10, who has done big things in the music scene, racking up millions of views and is probably the most successful Croydon drill rapper after SL. Now speaking of 25, a member known as D Rose who repped them would have issues with a few STK members, so much that D Rose and his family would move out of the Croydon area because of this bitter animosity. D Rose, real name being Andre Adiremi, was planning to travel back to Croydon to run an errand. His enemies, upon learning that Andre was due to return to Monks Hill's estate, South London, for a visit, would arm themselves and plan a hit. You got for them? Huh? You got for them? <laughs> well, listen. Yeah, tell Monks Hill and the rest of them. Yeah, money habits, shanking habits. Yeah, watch. <laughs> now on the 16th of August 2016. STK members travelled to Monk Hill's estate where they spotted Andre, the group carrying knives and a metal pole, chased him down the street before catching up and launching a brutal attack. They then got into a white vehicle and drove off. Andre fell to the ground where he was stabbed and kicked until he was unconscious. He was taken to a South London hospital but died later that evening from his injuries. One of the STK members known as Seller attended Croydon University Hospital with knife wounds to his head. When asked by police how he had sustained the injuries, he was uncooperative. Seller was subsequently arrested. Police investigated the murder, found three knives near the scene which had been thrown from the car, while a metal pole was found with Andre's blood on it and Seller's DNA. CCTV footage and clothing comparison also led police to tracing the three suspects. Sella and Mukasa were arrested a day after the incidents and charged with murder. 
Zawahi was arrested on Sunday, August 21. Rodney Mukasa, 20, and Ali Zawahi, 19, were both handed life sentences at the Old Bailey for the murder of 19-year-old Andre Adiremi. Now Fabio Sella, 19, was sentenced to 16 years after being convicted of the lesser charge of manslaughter. The three men, all from Croydon, carried out their attack on an aspiring rapper following a long-running feud between him and Seller. After the death of Andre, aka D Rose, 25 became known as Rose Gang in his honour. First tonight, it's an unimaginable loss, losing a child. But then, one of your son's killers posts a video online from his prison cell, seemingly mocking his victim. That's what happened to a mother from Croydon. The boy A books come a long way from skin fades. This is Ali Zahawi, a convicted killer. He's filming himself in prison. Still locked up. You know, it could be worse, it, I could be dead kind of thing. It's like, you've actually killed somebody. So, you know, are you like deliberately trying to make a laughing joke out of what you've done to my child? Um, so I was quite angry and then I got really emotional actually. I, it was like crying because why should I still see your face and not see my son? Now a hashtag O member known as Tugsy, real name Aki Moore, was a 22 year old rapper and father of three, all under four years old. Now on the 7th of October 2016 in East New Road, Croydon, Tugsy was sat on a grass verge chatting with friends. Suddenly a shooter pulled up and shot him in the head at point blank range, execution style. Police and paramedics rushed to the scene but despite efforts to save the young musician, he was pronounced dead at the scene. Neighbours in a modern estate of family homes described hearing two shots at around 11.25pm, which they at first thought were fireworks, before Mr Moore's friend cried out for help. A friend was cradling in his head in his arms as he bled from a gunshot wound to his temple. The gunman fled the area and remains on the run. The murder remains unsolved till this day. Now on the 31st of October 2016, an SPV member known as Scotty was set upon by double O members. Scotty had been with friends in the park in Croydon when Jack Harvey, who was 16, led a group of masked attackers armed with knives, baseball bats and a screwdriver in selecting Scotty and two other men as their victims. Eight attackers had arrived at the scene in two cars armed with a variety of weapons for the planned attack which just took two minutes they then drove away. Scotty was left to die in a pool of his own blood having been chased through a pitch black park and stabbed with a screwdriver before having a knife fatally driven into his neck. He was known for his big smile and made friends everywhere he went. The tribute from the family of 22 year old Scott Kuibitra who was stabbed to death in Croydon on Halloween. Today, a week on from his murder, his family visited the place where he was killed to appeal for any witnesses to come forward. Anna O'Neill has been speaking to them. Can you imagine? She went to his of his other son's house. When she reached there around half past eight, they got a phone call saying her son has been killed. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Can you Harvey took part in a savage attack in which played the leading role. He selected the victims and gave instructions to his fellow attackers. A court heard. At the time of this horrific crime, he had long left his parents and was living in a secure care juvenile care unit in Wallington. He broke his curfew to travel to Selhurst and commit murder. By that time, he had already amassed 26 criminal charges against him. The path of criminality, which would end in tragedy, was laid out from the start, according to barrister Michael QC, who defended Harvey at the Old Bailey. Harvey's father was in prison from the now convicted killer's earliest childhood, and the young Harvey was under the care of his mother, who drank heavily. Social services would intervene to try and arrange for Harvey's care at 10 years old, now released, father came back into the youngster's life when his mother was in turn sent to prison. While living under his roof, Harvey witnessed his drug abusing father smoke crack cocaine in the house. Harvey was tried and sentenced for his part in the killing alongside 21 year old Charlie O. Rose. Judge Sarah Monroe said Harvey had been exposed to the criminal lifestyle of his parents but did not accept this as an excuse. She sentenced Harvey to 19 years in prison. Charlie Rose was given a minimum life sentence of 25 years in prison. In 2017, G Lane was known as CR7 and they were heavily linked with Valley Park. A 15 year old known as Jets 
real name Jermaine was a part of this link up. Now Jets was an aspiring architect and engineer. On the 8th of August 2017, during the summer holidays, after an evening with friends at a cinema, Jets was ambushed by Mark Hughes of the hashtag O Gang, armed with knives in the Fulton Heath area. Jermaine was stabbed seven times with a fatal wound to the femoral artery of his right thigh. Despite efforts from bystanders and emergency services, Jermaine bled to death and was pronounced dead at the scene. The crime occurred less than 100 yards from his home. Jermaine's death received international attention and opened a conversation on the impact of dual music and the increase of knife crime across London. Jermaine's case was influential since it was one of the first cases to highlight YouTube and dual music as evidence for the murder. After Jermaine's trial, Director of Public Prosecutions Max Hill stated that violent social media posts must be used by prosecutors to crack down on gangs. Jermaine's death has been a point of reference for calls to ban and sanction music that may initiate a threat of violence. The circumstances of the attack had been predicted in lyrics penned by Junior Simpson, who was also known as the rapper M Trap. If there wasn't that video or those videos posted on YouTube, I highly doubt that Jermaine would be buried right now. He would be here right now. On the 8th of January 2018, the trial for Jermaine's murder took place at the Old Bailey. Four out of the five youths were convicted on the 14th of February 2018. Adam Benzahi, 21, will serve a minimum of 22 years. Samuel Oliver Rowland, 18, a minimum of 20 years, and Junior Simpson, 17, a minimum of 18 years. Saskia Hay Elliott, 18 of Croydon, was also found guilty, but only of manslaughter and was sentenced to 12 years and 6 months. Now remember how I said CR7 and Valley Park were well linked? Well, CR7 members felt Jermaine was abandoned by the Valley Park members present. And this is what broke them apart and caused the issues we see between them today. CR7 also became known as G Lane. Little Patch was a fifth gang member and was loved in the Croydon community. Sadly, on the 3rd of April 2018, emergency services were called at 12.03 pm on Shadwell Pierhead, which is off Glamis Road in Tower Hamlets, East London, to reports of a body seen in the River Thames. Metropolitan Police Officers, London Ambulance Service Paramedics and the Royal National Lifeboat Institutions all attended the location and discovered the body. The body was Little Patch. Who did it is still a mystery. However, S-Town slash STK members and fifth members linked up under Little Patch World and this is how the alliance LPW formed. T-Way gave him a shout out on his song Anglo-Saxon where he says, My little bro P and run up the whole high street he was their effing captain now 17 year old little s real name damani marge was a kind and loving older brother to his two siblings who looked up to him and loved him he was a responsible young man who worked for a children's entertainment company he was an easy going man with many friends who loved and respected him for being funny kind and supportive many people said he was innocent however others saw him as a white horse affiliate now on the 8th of March 2020, Damani was on his way home from work when he was drawn into an altercation with a GLA member known as Y. Doc Grinner on the number 130 bus in South Norwood at about 8.30pm. Damani sadly suffered a knife wound to the neck. A bus passenger performed resuscitation on a victim who collapsed bleeding on the street in front of the Monkey Puzzle Day nursery in Whitehorse Lane. Police and paramedics arrived, but he was pronounced dead at the scene 40 minutes later. The attacker, also 17 years old, was later arrested and charged for his murder. The Old Bailey heard that the defendant was alleged to have tried to snatch Damani's gold coloured chain as the boy lay dying. Given evidence in his defence, the youth had denied intending to kill Damani, claiming it was an accident. He told jurors that he carried a large hunting knife for his own protection and only got it out to warn off the money who he had been aware of. Jury deliberated for 27 hours to clear the youth of murder and the lesser alternative charge of manslaughter. The defendant, who cannot be named because of his age, was found guilty only of possessing an offensive weapon. Now Damsey, real name Damari Roy, was a White Horse member. 
he was currently dating a woman who had a very jealous ex-boyfriend. Byron Wine, being a jealous ex, plotted on Damsey and in July 2021, Damsey, who was just 16 years old, was attacked as he cycled in Fulton Heath. After he was stabbed, Damsey managed to climb into a passing van with the help of those inside. It was there they discovered he had a significant chest injury. He was rushed to hospital but later died. Byron Wine, 20, of Grenaby Road, Croydon was arrested in the days after the attack and was later charged with Damari's murder. Now Croydon Crown Court heard that Wine became motivated by jealousy after Damari became friends with his ex-girlfriend and formed a fatal grudge against the teen. He was caught on camera on the back of a moped circling Damari with a knife in his hand before launching the fatal attack. The evidence against Wine was particularly strong. He was on bail for another offence and was wearing an electric tag which not only registered the times he left his home and arrived back again but also pinged every time he passed another house with a tagging device monitor installed. The jury also heard that on the day after the attack, Wine received a call from his ex-partner where he admitted being responsible for stabbing Damari. Byron was found guilty of murder following a trial at Croydon Crown Court and was sentenced to life with a minimum term of 28 years. Now on the 1st of July 2021, STK member Ells, real name being Cameron Smith, he was on the Shublin's estate when two splash set members in Ramdat and Jay Luce attacked him, stabbing him a total of 8 times with a zombie knife in front of his own mother in their home on Bracken Avenue. The two attackers were arrested and charged for his murder. Judge Michael K. K. C. told the Old Bailey this is yet another harrowing and depressing tale of gang related violence culminating in a barbaric killing of a young man. He said Smith's mother had desperately tried to ward off the attack. The judge said in giving evidence she told the court she was begging attackers to kill her rather than her son. Smith's mother had been left broken hearted by the loss of her only child. Ringleader Romain Lapierre, 20, received a life sentence with a minimum term of 28 years for the murder. Jordan Shuko, 19, of Wembley, was convicted of manslaughter and jailed for 15 years. Now YSD, real name Jermaine Cools, was a 14-year-old boy. On the 18th of November 2021, Jermaine Cools was outside a chicken shop near West Croydon Station. It is here where Marcus Walker, an STK member stabbed him to death with a zombie knife. Marcus Walker, age 17, appeared at the Old Bailey. The court heard Jermaine had died in a senseless attack. Prosecutor Caroline Carberry KC told the court it is clear that Jermaine Cools did not stand a chance. He could offer no resistance, he was unarmed, he was on the floor and he was totally vulnerable. He was stabbed a total of seven times by Marcus Walker in a senseless attack of extreme ferocity. Now Judge Sarah Monroe said Walker had attacked a 14 year old mercilessly and the victim must have been terrified and in agony. Showing a lack of remorse he wrote about the murder in rap lyrics while awaiting trial saying even if the youth was a civilian I will still rewind and chef his back. The victim's mother Laureen Dudek described the failure to deal with Walker's knife carrying habit as a missed opportunity. She said had it been addressed earlier he would not have had the opportunity to go out and kill. Young males get caught with a knife, the knife gets confiscated. Within an hour they get another one from Snapchat or social media. There is no sentence which I can pass which can relieve the pain and loss which you caused. Nothing can bring Jermaine back. No term of years can even begin to compensate for his family's loss. Would you stand up, please? The sentences I pass upon you are as follows. For the murder, detention at His Majesty's pleasure, the minimum term before you will be considered for release by the parole board will be one of 19 years. You will not be released when you have served that minimum term. Indeed, you will only ever be released if the parole board consider that you no longer pose a risk of harm to the public. Now G1, real name Tyrese Miller, was a member of the 5th gang and on the 4th of April 2023, G1 was on Croydon Road near the junction with Beddington Lane in Mitcham when he was shot dead. Manuel, 19, of Garrett Lane, Kavan Morrison, 18, 
of Swain Close, Armani McClymont 20 of Camden Way, Camden Way in Fulton Heath that is, and finally Denzel Quateng 20 of Park Way in New Addington. All four men have been charged with the murder of 22 year old Tyrese Miller and await trial. And this brings me to the end of the sad story of Croydon. As usual, I send my condolences to the family of everyone I mentioned. Special shout out to Cold Bloody Steppers for helping me make this video. Go follow him up on Instagram. Also, make sure to like the video and subscribe as always. It doesn't cost a thing and it helps me a long way. For uncut and early releases of videos I make, subscribe to my Patreon.